Welcome to Bosnia and Herzegovina! <laughs> Tankkal végigvenni Románián Egy szép nagy tigrisen És a két kezünkben gránát legyen Welcome to Bosnia, a country found in southeastern Europe on the Balkan Peninsula When being mentioned, most people's minds usually automatically think of this Or even this Crazy hamburger! If you're terminally online, that is, Bosnia often gets overshadowed by its larger-than-life absurdist reputation, with the country frequently carrying the title of Ohio of Europe. But things aren't always as they seem. To truly understand this country, there is no other option but to go to the past and familiarize with its history. Much like with the majority of the Balkans, Bosnia was inhabited ever since the Stone Age. Many of its first people settled in central Bosnia, where they lived up until the arrival of the Illyrians, who displaced them upon themselves, being displaced originally by the Celts. Yet they too didn't stay there for too long, as in the 2nd century BC, the Romans invaded the country and incorporated it within their province of Dalmatia. After the fall of the Illyrian Kingdom, Bosnia started to develop rapidly as new settlers rushed to the region. Due to its mineral abundance, the province became known for its mines, as numerous ones sprung up throughout Roman Dalmatia. However, things didn't stay so prosperous forever. In the late 4th century, the eastern and western parts of the empire decided, much like a couple during a 100% mutual breakup, it would be best if they saw other people. Thus, Dalmatia and by extension Bosnia got partitioned between the two. Soon after, the country became a battleground as the barbarian invasion by the likes of the Ostrogoths, Alans and Huns overwhelmed the empire. In the 6th century, the Eastern Roman Empire, now renamed with a cool new name and a fan base of 14-year-old internet monarchists, Byzantium, was able to conquer the region and reinstate the rule of law once more. But once again, much like the majority of my relationships, that too didn't last long. <laughs> As tens of thousands of Slavs and Avars stormed into Byzantium and settled in the Balkans and Bosnia. Which they could have prevented if they had Atlas VPN, baby! In a day and age where every bozo and his mom has hacking skills and every government, corporation and Romanian is out to collect your data, having a VPN is crucial. And with Atlas VPN being the best deal on the market, you should absolutely check them out and click the link in the description as they provide crucial internet protection for just $1.83 per month. As someone who travels frequently and often than not doesn't have the best internet connection, using a VPN is a must. Alongside with keeping your search and data private, Atlas goes the extra step and stops ads and malware. Companies also more often than not use geographic discrimination and will charge you separate amounts for the same product based on your IP address, even YouTube memberships. However, with Atlas, you can jump countries virtually and get the best bang for your buck. Pro tip, best prices are off of Argentinian and Serbian IPs. And if all of that wasn't enough to convince you, you can access different TV shows and movies on Netflix, which again is Geolock, and all that on unlimited devices. So go and click the link in the description and get yourself Atlas Premium for just $183 a month, plus 3 months for free. And if you don't like the service, which I doubt, you have a 30 day money back guarantee. So again, go to atlasv.pn slash Europe and protect yourself. By the 9th century, the Slavs made up the majority of the population. During this time, the majority of the population also turned to Christianity and adopted feudalism as the Franks invaded the region. In the 10th century, the territory known then as Bosnia encompassed most of modern-day Bosnia and parts of modern-day Dalmatia, Montenegro and a bit of Serbia, which allowed the country to have access to the Adriatic Sea and engage in maritime trade, most notably the province of Hum, also known as Zahumlia, 
served as the country's center of trade. Tons of rare metals, minerals, and livestock made their way through the province as they would be traded further out in Europe and Asia. During this time, Bosnia was often changing its hands between the Serbs, Hungarians, Croatians, and Byzantines, and on special occasions, even Bulgarians, as the neighboring kingdoms sought to extend their influence in the region. This lasted up until the 12th century when the Bosnian rulers finally decided that they had enough of European bullshit and instated their own self-rule. Thus, in 1130, Bosnia became an independent state, proclaiming itself as the Banate of Bosnia. Several years and a couple of Hungarian and Byzantine invasions later, in 1180, it came under the rule of Ban Kulin. Over the next 20 or so years of Kulin's reign, Bosnia entered its golden age, most notable for its time of peace and stability. Under him, Bosnia also increased its exports and strengthened its economy, as Kulin made several treaties with the city-state of Dubrovnik and the Venetians. Yet, his rule wasn't completely uncontroversial. After the Great Schism a bit over a century earlier, Bosnia served as a middle ground between Eastern Orthodoxy and Catholicism. During Kulin's rule, the Bosnian church started taking off drastically, which in turn severely angered Bosnia's neighboring kingdoms and the papacy. Thus, shortly after Kulin's death, Hungary attempted, using religion as a castle's belly, to reclaim rule over the Banate in the mid-13th century. Throughout the early 14th century, Bosnia was fought over between the Šubić and Kotromanić families for its throne. This conflict ended in 1322, when Stjepan II Kotormanić seized the throne. During his rule, he would launch several military campaigns in an effort to expand his domain, seizing territories in the north and west alongside with Zahumje and parts of Dalmatia. Upon his death, he was succeeded by his nephew and first king of Bosnia, Stefan Tvrtko I. Much like his uncle, he too focused on expanding his domain and gaining power within his court ousting several of his family members out of power and control. During his conquests, upon capturing the monastery of St. Sava, Tvrtko proclaimed himself as the king of Bosnia, the Serbs and the Croats. However, he never invaded neighboring Serbia to instill his claim. I wonder why. Krtina, krtina, u, krtina, krtina, u. In 1377, Bosnia was finally pronounced a kingdom and entered a period of prosperity up until Tvrtko's death. By the 15th century, the Ottomans were already making great strides as they made their way into the Balkans and defeated the Serbian-led coalition at the Battle of Kosovo. During the same time, Bosnia entered a slow decline that eventually led to severe instability which contributed to the kingdom succumbing under the Islamic Empire in 1463. Resistance lasted well into the 16th century and for a brief period the kingdom was able to gain its independence again with the help of Hungary. However, such efforts were futile as the Ottomans were able to reinstate their hegemony. The Ottomans instating their power within Bosnia fundamentally changed the country over the course of the next 400 years. One of the first changes was the execution of the kingdom's nobility and their replacement with loyal Muslim subjects from the empire. After that, the country's administration and social ruling system was turned upside down, as it implemented policies based on citizens' class and religion. Muslims gained more rights and favored treatment by the government, while Christians were treated as more or less second-class citizens and became forced to pay a higher tax, and many of their children were forcibly taken away from their families and forced converted to Islam and put to work in the military as the Janissaries. During this time, Croatian women within Bosnia en masse started returning to the tradition of Sicanje, aka tattooing themselves with traditional ethnic patterns as a way of protecting themselves against abductions and forced marriages by Muslims. They would tattoo themselves as tattoos are forbidden in Islam, thus inked women would be avoided. Mashallah.
Over the years, Bosnia is part of a Bosnian-speaking Muslim community, which became the country's majority, as many Bosnians abandoned their church in favor of being treated better by the ruling class. An important thing to say is, many also ditched Christianity for Islam, as their Christian faith wasn't as strong, because as I mentioned previously, many other Christians in the region and abroad dismissed their denomination as heretical. Thus, the incentive for staying with the Bosnian church was quite low in the first place, which eventually led to its complete extinction. However, one thing the Bosnian church did leave behind were the Stechak tombstones, which were burial monuments with enigmatic imagery written in now extinct Bosnian Cyrillic. Thousands can be found throughout the country, many of which were put under UNESCO protection today. As the empire expanded north into Hungary, Bosnia started thriving as the province became a center of trade and much of its population started gaining status as military leaders and governors throughout their own province and the rest of the Balkans. During this time, two of the country's most well-known cities were established, Sarajevo and Mostar, which then grew into major regional commerce and cultural centers, leading to Sarajevo being called the Jerusalem of Europe. The city gained that title due to its high religious diversity as both Muslims, Catholics, Orthodox and Jewish communities coexisted there peacefully for centuries. With its high compliance and prestige, although converted to Islam, Bosnia was able to preserve its autonomy and pre-Ottoman culture, which was not the case for many other peoples that fell under the Turks. This is evident as just going down the streets of Sarajevo, you can find a mosque, a Catholic and Orthodox church and a synagogue all in the same neighborhood. Yet things weren't able to stay prosperous forever, and as the Ottoman Empire fell into decline, Bosnia became ripe for the picking by the other empires. Thus, in the late 19th century, with the Treaty of Berlin, Austria-Hungary forced the Ottomans to cede Bosnia under their administration, as the inbreeding spastics, known as the Habsburgs, became the de facto rulers of Bosnia. A large wave of emigration hit the country, as many Muslims abandoned their homes and searched for new places to settle back within the empire. Because who in their right mind would want to live in a European Alabama? As a result, in modern-day Turkey, over 100,000 people still identify as Bosniaks due to this migration. After that, mass programs of modernization and reformation of the country ensued, as Austria-Hungary aimed to fully integrate the country within its empire. Although on first hand these programs seemed especially successful in the realms of the economy, Pan-Slavic nationalism started to spread as the population became more educated. Many Serbs and Croats, still living in Bosnia, desired to be unified with their fellow Slavic brethren in states of their own. Things escalated quickly as a Bosnian Serb nationalist assassinated Archduke Franz Ferdinand in 1914, as a result of Austria-Hungary fully annexing the country, which plunged most of the European continent into the First World War. <laughs> With the conclusion of the First World Trollage, the Pan-Slavic idea was achieved and Bosnia was incorporated into the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, aka later on known as Yugoslavia. But even though Bosnia was finally under the rule of its same people, tensions within the country were still persistent. Because this is the Balkans after all. Moreover, the majority of the interwar period in Bosnia was characterized by rising ethnic tensions and political unrest as the country implemented agrarian reforms, mass colonized Bosnia with settlers from other parts of the kingdom, mainly Serbia, and confiscated and redistributed property. During this time, many of the previously established geographic and were split into 33 different oblasts in a sort of gerrymander, stripping away power from local Muslims and handing it over to the new Serbian and Croatian colonizers. A couple of decades later, World War II engulfed Yugoslavia into flames, and as the Axis armies marched into Belgrade, the entirety of Bosnia was ceded to the German puppet state of the independent state of Croatia. Under the Croats, almost all of Bosnia's Jews were eradicated from its territory, and over 300,000 Serbs were murdered and sent to concentration camps. As a result, as a result, many Serbs joined nationalist Chetniks, whose main aim was to create a greater Serbian state. Thus, many targeted to ethnically cleanse the local Muslims, 
which ended up in the murder of around 100,000 Bosniaks. This ethnic violence then drove the targeted Muslims to join the Croatian army and put up resistance. However, as the war started going in the Allies' favor, the communist partisans, led by Josip Broz Tito were able to liberate most of Bosnia including Sarajevo and in 1946 they established the Federal People's Republic of Yugoslavia with Bosnia as one of its six constituent republics. Over the next 40 years, socialist Bosnia prospered more or less, as large investments from the central government made way into the republic. The country's economic state quickly improved as Yugoslavia started exploiting many of its natural resources, mining salt, precious metals, and coal. Because of its mountainous geography, much of Yugoslavia's military industry was also centered in Bosnia. Thousands of soldiers were deployed throughout the country in barracks and many military factories sprung up throughout the republic, producing Yugoslav weapons such as the Zastava guns and artillery. However, things didn't stay as robust forever. After the death of Yugoslavia's dictator Tito, in 1980 Yugoslavia and de facto Bosnia was swept with a wave of nationalism as the country's ethnic group struggled to fit in the power vacuum and blame the problems of the country onto each other. Many of the federation's minorities were also unhappy with Serbian hegemony in politics within the country and over their own republics. As a result, in 1992, Bosnia held a referendum to secede from Yugoslavia, which most of its Serbian population boycotted. The results of the referendum as a result were 98% in favor of secession. Soon after, war broke out as the Serbs in Bosnia, with the support of Yugoslavia, started a military campaign of taking control of Serbian majority areas. Over the next three years, the conflict in Bosnia came to be known as the Bosnian War, and the worst armed conflict in Europe since World War II. Throughout Bosnia, ethnic cleansing ensued as fighting devastated the country. All three ethnic groups of Bosniaks, Croats, and Serbs were cleansed and displaced by one another. However, the Bosnian Serb army was significantly better funded and organized. They were able to occupy over 70% of the country and commit the majority of the war crimes in the conflict. Under their offensive, some of the worst attacks came to fruition, with the longest siege in history, the Siege of Sarajevo and the Srebrenica Massacre. As a result, the war resulted in over 100,000 casualties and over 2.2 million people getting displaced, which at the time accounted for half of the country's population. The war came to an end as the Bosniaks and Croats allied against the Bosnian Serbs, joining forces in a joint offensive, followed by NATO air support and bombing of Bosnian Serb targets. Peace was achieved with the signing of the Dayton Agreement, which kept the country unified but divided into two with the formation of Republika Srpska, which gave the Serbs significant autonomy as well as veto power over the federation, which goes about as well as you can expect. Alongside that, the agreement divided political power within the country based on ethnic lines, which guaranteed all three people groups representation within the government. Within the dawn of the 21st century, Bosnia has been kept stable in large part due to the international community. Its economy has been on a slow rise despite its drastically declining population, mostly caused by high levels of brain drain and emigration. The country was also assigned the title of potential candidate for accession into the EU, although for the most part the country has moved on from its violent past in the 90s. Secessionist movements are still active and popular in Republika Srpska, where the majority of the population wishes to secede from the federation and either become its own country or join with Serbia. Nevertheless, the country and its people strive for a peaceful and more prosperous future and may they finally achieve it. I wish to thank you all for watching. If you wish to support my channel, consider buying a shirt from theironicshop.com or become a member like these lovely people. If you wish to get bonus content, consider joining the Postcard Club on Patreon, where every month I will send you a cool card from the places I've traveled to, alongside with fun facts about the place. My name is Janos, and you've watched Living Ironically in Europe. Hey.